Welcome to the Coach's Table Podcast, where coaches come to grow personally and professionally through real-world application and online education. What is up, everybody? Man, July is, is, is over with. August is here. Football is right around the corner. Uh, college sports is rolling. It's excited. It's busy. It's fast. Um, but today is going to be a little bit different. Um, you know, we're not going to talk about anything college sports related. Maybe we will a little bit. But uh, the guest that I have on today, if you don't see him on social, I think you're not looking. But he's everywhere, and he's going to give you a master class on how to blow up your social media, what to look for, things that we can help you with, how to make things simple, right? How to make things simple, not complex, in a world of complexity. Uh, but before I introduce him, um, guys, I want to remind you, look, we are growing rapidly on Spotify and on YouTube, and that's because of you. So if you get value out of this, share the show. That's the only thing I ask of you. If you resonate with this, if you get entertained or educated, do us a huge favor, share the show, share it with a friend. Hey, man, you really need to listen to this because it can help you. If we don't do a good job, don't share it. It's a pure value exchange, okay? It's a pure value exchange. So do us a huge favor, share the show, subscribe on YouTube, and leave a review on Spotify. That would help us out tremendously. Let other coaches and people know, like, this is something that they need to be listening to. So without further ado, Mr. Rico, what is going on, man? What's well, good, bro? I appreciate the introduction, and I, and I love the plug. I was waiting because I'm like, okay, if he doesn't say leave a review, I'm going to do that for him. But yeah. nonetheless, well done. Thank you. Appreciate that. You know, one thing I've learned a lot, man, is, and I even do this myself, like, you know, Yelp was a big deal and kind of still is, but Yelp is a review thing, right? And you go and look at other, whether it's podcasts, whether it's uh, restaurants, whether it's whatever the case may be. People aren't going based off what they see. They go based off the reviews, where to live, all this other stuff. And so it's like the number one thing that people can do, and it takes literally 10 seconds, is just leave a review. It's not hard, you know? Yeah, amen. I mean, it, it's funny. When I was younger, I mm -hmm. would always, like my, my mom, she was big on Yelp and everything. And that's something that always stuck with me is whenever you go places, I'm always looking okay, this place is a 4.7, but this other place is a 4.9 and it has more reviews. So I look at that as if it has 4.9 stars and it has like a thousand reviews, but the other one has like 4.7 and only a hundred reviews, I'm going to the other one because that's more volume of people who voted yep. positively and clearly there's something good there. I have to go. Yeah, that's such a great way to look at it a different way to look at it because some people will look at it the other way and they won't even look at the reviews or the stars they'll just see the first one 4.7 that's good enough for me and go mm -hmm. um but the way to look at it is it's positive reviews think of it as a you know, thousand reviews that's a thousand people saying positive things about you that's something that has merit compared to a hundred yeah and and, and at, at the end of the day in a world in which we live in today volume is everything volume is everything right um and, and, and it's not it, it's volume because the volume is going to get you to where you want to go right it's reps it's it's whether it's calls you name it it's volume volume is is the the winner time is the intensifier right so how long you've been doing it for or how short you can get something done like the number one thing i talked about coaches or two coaches about all the time is like speed of execution right? Mm -hmm. Because you can have an idea, but if you're not executing, it doesn't matter. And if you sit and sit and sit and sit, it's not happening. Amen. And that's one thing that I know we'll talk on too, just to yeah. even segue of content. Like there's so yeah. many strength coaches and there's so many just coaches online, whether you're in person or and you're like, oh, I have a good idea for content. This episode is sponsored by Team Builder. Team Builder is the number one performance platform for strength coaches around the world. Their software provides coaches with an elevated experience when it comes to program development, data tracking, and staying connected with athletes and clients. Coaches also have access to consultations with Team Builder's in-house sports scientists to help manage and analyze data. Head to teambuilder.com and sign up with promo code TABLE to start your free 30-day trial. That is Team Builder. T E A M B U I L D R dot com and sign up with promo code table to start your free 30 day trial. Coaches, this podcast is sponsored by Samsung Equipment. They have been providing elite strength training equipment and professional weight room solutions since 1976. If you value product quality, 
great customer service, and a company with integrity make Samson Equipment your go-to. Visit them at SamsonEquipment.com and let them know the Coach's Table podcast gave you a seat at their table. That is Samson Equipment, S-A-M-S-O-N Equipment.com and let them know the Coach's Table podcast gave you a seat at their table. Great. Go execute on it. That's yeah. the one thing that most people struggle with is, well, I have so many ideas. I have so many ways in which I want to present something. Could I, should I do a reel on this? Should I do a YouTube video on this? The yep. answer is yes. The, yes. the only thing stopping you is you actually doing it. And then what mm -hmm. happens? Oh, I don't have the time. Oh, I don't have the camera. I don't know how to do it. Oh, I don't. It's like, well, you have the idea. And you know, one of my favorite quotes ever from Gary Vaynerchuk is ideas are mm -hmm. shit. Execution's yep. everything. You could have the best idea in the world, right? Like Uber was a great idea. If that mm -hmm. wasn't executed on, it wouldn't be Uber. Like right. everything is a great idea until it's actually executed on. Yeah. That's, and that's the only reason why it's considered a great idea is because somebody did execute on that, right? Like because everybody has billion dollar ideas in their head, but nobody executes and therefore nobody knows about it, right? So to kind of talk about that. Okay, so you, for those people that don't know you, um, First of all, drop your social if they don't know you, because if you're listening, what I want you to do is take a pause, go look at his social real quick, and then come back and listen to this because it's going to make a lot more sense once you go there. So what's your social? Rico.Incarnati. And I will add something too. If you do enjoy this episode with both of us, tag both of us on your Instagram story so we can mm -hmm. see it and then reshare it so that yes. the message is hitting. Yes, absolutely. So now that you've gone and looked at Rico's social media profile and you come back. Rico, you used to work in New York uh, for Jordan and that's kind of how your content started or that's where you kind of got started. How did that connection happen, one? And then where have you segued to from there? I know you're pretty much on your own now, right? Because you used to work for him back in the day. But how long has it taken to give people a realistic timeline? It's not an overnight thing by no means. Correct. So I'll answer your first question of how that connection even happened. So the Jordan yeah. you're referring to is Jordan Syatt. And oh. I worked for him for two years, lived in New York City, as you mentioned. The way that that connection happened was actually prior. My previous person that I worked for was a man named Zach Rushlow, who on Instagram is the Flexible Dieting Lifestyle. And for those of you that don't know him, a quick overview. He makes macro-friendly recipes, macro-friendly uh, like treats, snacks, foods to help people hit their calories and macros without having to sacrifice the foods that they love and just put a spin sure. on it, right? Yeah. I met him at a Houston event, uh, which was for Summer Shredding, which was hosted by Christian Guzman, who yep. those of you, if you don't know him, owner of Alphalete Athletics. And yep. I, met, I met Jordan through Zach. Now, the way I met Jordan was my time during my time working with Zach – I had moved from Chicago to Austin, um, dropped out of school with one year left, and I met Jordan at a Pencils of Promise event while I was working with Zach in Los Angeles. And we flew there because it was a uh, charity event hosted by Lewis Howes, and there was a bunch of other fitness people there and whatnot. Yep. And I knew Jordan as Gary Vaynerchuk's trainer, not Jordan. Mm -hmm. And, that, that, and that's, gotcha. a key, that's a key differentiator is like I knew him for – being his trainer, not his own person, right? Mm -hmm. So we connected and just touched base and whatnot. He followed me. I'm like, oh, super cool. We just connected on DM. After my time working with Zach, uh, Jordan had put on his Instagram story about seven, eight months later after my time working with Zach, right? Um, I mean, to be honest with you, there's a whole part of this like whole story that we're uh, completely omitting, but I just want to like stay on track sure, for this sure, sure. specific yeah, yeah. question. <laughs> and, and so... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. After my time working with Zach, which is around March of 2018, mm -hmm. September 2018, in that in, in that middle period between March and September, I moved back home. I was working at Whole Foods. I worked at like a car place to do photo and video. So I was kind of like figuring out again and whatnot. And sure. Jordan put on a story that he was looking for a videographer. And so I replied. I said, hey, I'd love the opportunity for this, knowing that we had connected before and he knew me a little bit. Sure. He said, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to give this guy – a chance because there's someone in front of you. If it doesn't work out in the next 90 days, I'll message you. So 90 days went by. I vividly remember it was December 1st and I was on the Stairmaster at Lifetime Fitness and my phone rings and I look down on the Stairmaster and it says like Jordan Syatt. 
mind you, I'm out of breath. I'm like on a 10 pace. I'm like, <laughs> and, and like he yeah. calls and I answer. I'm like, I'm like, yo, what's up, man? He's like, yeah. yo, are you, what's up, bro? Are you good? I'm like, yeah, yeah, just doing cardio. I'm good. And he's yeah. like, you want to move to New York City? I'm like, yup. And he's like, oh, okay. He's like, you, we could, you could think about it if you need to. I'm like, no, no, no. Like, I want to. Let's do it. And yeah. that's how it started. And two weeks later, I went to New York City to hang out with him for the weekend, just to kind of get to know each other a little bit. And yep. two weeks after that, I moved my entire life from Chicago to New York City with just two suitcases in a Chinatown apartment with six other roommates. And I was like doing the whole Gary V thing of like, you know, yeah, yeah, live yeah. with like 20 other people, yada, yada. Mind you, I'm living in New York City. I'm still paying $1,100 a month for a room that's the size of my phone. Like, I, I kid you not. I'm, I'm in. I know. I know. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's not even funny. And yeah. nonetheless, worked with Jordan for the next two years. And then obviously like I'm on my own now where I do strategy and consulting. And so that's my, my business right now. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny. Cause you bring it up. Like, what did that do for you? Like, what did that connection and everything do for you? Well, one thing that people don't know is Gary Vaynerchuk himself quite literally saved my entire life because wow. Gary V made a post a while ago, like when I was in college saying, I would rather you spend the next two to three years doing what you want to do and not pleasing your parents versus the next 80 years resenting them because you did what they wanted you to do. Mm. Right. Meaning like I would have become a doctor because of my parents, not because Enrico wanted to. And yeah. I would have presented them for that versus let me do what Enrico wants to do for the next two to three years. Even if I don't know what that is, that's okay. I can yep. figure it out a little bit. And oh, by the way, he gave me the permission to do that. So mm -hmm. what that did for me, not only just from that perspective, but when I first met Gary, it was at his apartment, we were at his gym and he comes walking out of the elevator and he's like, what's up, bro? I'm like, yeah, what's up, bro? As if we <laughs> just know each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. And there's, there's a whole chain of events of like, everything was just, I, I look back on life now and I'm like, there's just no way that I, I would be here if it wasn't because of, of your content. And yeah. that's when I realized the power of social, like that, it really mm. hit me differently then. Right. Mm. Like that's when it made, it made it real for me. Like, Oh, this social thing. I'm like, it's fucking real. And yeah. the whole experience with, with Jordan and everything like that, taught me invaluable lessons, right? Like we mm. helped grow his YouTube channel to an over six figure YouTube channel. We grew his socials by over four or five, 600,000 followers, like across all channels, like, and his podcast like blew up as well, like top 10 yeah. uh, fitness podcast. Right. And yeah. it, it taught me a valuable lesson too, because I was the guy that did everything. I was mm. the filmer. I was the editor. I was strategy. I was doing the thumbnails. I was uploading audio support. I was doing everything. All of it, and, all of it, and, yeah. And, right, but I have such a respect for the craft of video and art and social now yeah. that I think a lot of people take for granted because they're like, oh, you know, I don't I, I don't know how to do audio and I don't know how to do upload, the, make right. these thumbnails and I'd edit videos right. and whatnot. Like, I understand that. I get it. Like, that's not your strong suit. Sure. I have such a respect now for other creators that do specialize in those areas because yeah. for me, I'm like, wow, I did it all. And I have a, I have a new appreciation for those people to your point from a, well, what did that do from a growth perspective? Well, I, I really understood how everything worked. I understood yes. how everything funneled of like, okay, we make a YouTube video. How many clips can we cut the cut from this? Where can we yeah. put this YouTube, uh, the, these clips on like Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, even, and yep. where can we distribute that to get more of the message out to then right. not only get those out, but funnel people back to the original video of the YouTube content, because Correct. that's where we, want, where we want people to go. And then yeah. also, by the way, I understood the, the whole science behind like, okay, how do we get people from not knowing you whatsoever to paying you? Like yeah. that was cool for me to see that whole cycle and understanding. It really comes down to solving people's problems, nurturing them for a long time, getting them to spend yep. a lot of time with you, building an immense amount of trust that the only logical answer is for them to work with you because you are the one who understands them to a T and they're like, okay, I have to work with you, you know? And so that whole process, not even just that, but just understanding social from a, from a different level, right? Like 
I, I, I know you want to, you want to get into it a little bit, but, um, no, you're good. Just, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, oh, oh no, no, you're good. You're good. So it, it, it was just like a whole new respect for being at the top type situation of like working with yep. someone who's really at the top there, understanding yeah. like all these coaches that are just starting out that are a lot smaller. And, and when I mean smaller, I look at it as like volume, like we talked about before yes. with the Yelp yes. reviews, right? Yes. Yep. Jordan has over three, 4,000 posts. Meanwhile, some of these coaches have 30 and they're like, yeah. why am I not growing? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you, you, need, you need to, you need to show up more. It's more volume. Yes. Yes. Right. So it, it's really just understanding at the top, how it all works. And then having a newfound respect for all these coaches that want to give up and want to quit. I'm like, if you just kept going, I promise you, you'll get there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. Right. And to address that real fast, because there's one thing like, okay. So if I look at Instagram and Twitter, right. Twitter doesn't tell you, it does tell you how many posts you've or tweets you've tweeted. Right. If you pull down, it tells you how many, nobody cares about that. Right. Like, nobody but it's funny because you go to instagram and for whatever people for for whatever reason people want to think that oh i need less posts but they want more followers and they want to follow less people and it's just like all you're doing is playing mind games it doesn't matter look at it as how many conversations are you having the more posts are conversations right but people are so concerned for whatever reason about the number of posts the number of followers or the number of people they are following twitter doesn't care or x or whatever it is now it doesn't matter they don't post that stuff right or it is you can find it but you have to scroll down but nobody looks at that as like oh you've done fifteen thousand tweets nobody cares right but for whatever reason instagram it's like the biggest deal facebook nobody cares you know it's 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 so weird to see the differences between the two because it's just like it's just number of conversations Bro, I'm so glad you brought that up. I've I've never spoken with this about people. I, yeah. I, I have it pulled up where it's like literally like yeah. my, my, my posts, followers, and following, right? I know yeah. people that want to keep the, the post ratio so low that so it low. Th 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 so, so then that way, oh, I, I've, I've made <laughs> under a thousand posts. So it looks like I haven't really had to try hard type of thing yeah. Me yeah. That mentality. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, let me ask you a question. Do you care how many at bats Aaron Judge took last season, or do you care about how many home runs he had? That's like right. you don't look, you don't look at how many times he struck out. You don't look at how many times he got a single, a double, a triple, or hell, like just went zero for four and like just did did nothing. But at the end yeah. of the season, what he broke the AL home run record, right? Right. But all I look at content and social media, and let me make this abundantly clear to people: whenever you're taking, whenever you're making a post, you're taking an at bat. That's all you're doing in the grant. And, and I, I've used this in LG too. I'm like Derek Jeter, hall of fame, right? Hall of fame. Yep. He's taken what? 11,000 at bats. Do you really care about that? Yeah. No, because yeah. you look at, because you look at Derek Jeter now, right? You look at him now as the owner of the Marlins. You look at him as the hall of fame player on the Yankees, the one who won the world series. Like you look at that Derek Jeter. You don't look at the Derek Jeter of, wow, he, he struck out like three games in a row. Yeah, like you don't exactly. look at that, and 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 to your point where you said about Twitter, like I have over, if we call it, I don't even is it tweets X is now tweets I don't, whatever, I don't even right, know. yeah, right, yeah, but like yeah. net net, I have probably over sixteen thousand tweets, but that's not yeah. just my tweets, that's my replies and engagement with all other people, it, yeah. but like yeah. I don't even care about that, like it it, it, no. it, it just doesn't matter. No, you know? it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. It's so weird because like. I don't understand why it's a thing on Instagram, whatever, right? Um, and I look at YouTube as the same thing. Like, how many videos are you producing, right? Now, like, quality of there is a little bit different, obviously. But, like, how many videos are you producing and how many things of that nature? It's like, if you're putting content out there, something's going to hit. When it does, it's going, right? Um, so let's kind of take a step back and, and we kind of address some stuff. But when people are looking to – let's talk strategy. When people are looking to make content, let's talk about – um, a flow and a process, and then before or a flow and a process to reach a, a certain audience, right? Mm. And for those individuals, you need to identify your target audience, right? That's number one because Rico's tar target audience is different than mine. Mine is different than you that's listening, and it's different than my mom's, and it's different than my brother's, whatever, right? So you have to identify your target audience, but. What are some simple processes if people are like, I should or I am going to start making content? 
what's a simple flow process or way to start getting stuff out there? Number one, I would scratch the I am and I should statements and I would just start implementing I will because there's so many I am going to do this or I should do this. Great. Yep. What will you do though? That's the differentiator. Right. That's number one. When it comes to what you said, understanding who your target audience is, my number one piece of advice for anyone starting on social, who are you speaking to? Yeah. Who are you talking to? Because guess what? The problems that a football player has is different than what a what an MLB player has. The difference yeah. from a collegiate athlete that's looking to get into the draft for uh, for NBA is different yeah. than what someone's trying to get from, let's say, getting called up from uh, like uh, minor like practice, leagues. right? Minor yeah. leagues or practice squad, right? Mm -hmm. Like those are different outcomes that people want, and like they have to work on different things. And oh, by the way, guess how many different positions there are, right? A like, ton. The, yeah. The, the, you, maybe you don't need to squat 900 pounds like Saquon Barkley because you have to have true trunk quads. But if you're a de yeah. if you're a de defensive lineman, maybe it is working on speed, on power, on like swim move techniques that like sure. running backs don't have to work on. Like there's so many different things. So yeah. what I'm getting at, and specifically for coaches out there and stuff too that like are in the space, uh, who are you talking to? Like who? Right? Like you said, my audience is different than yours. And not right. only just that, understanding where are they. Where is your audience? Are they going to be on Instagram more? Are they on TikTok more? Are they on Facebook more? We talked about in the beginning of this. Well, the target audience that I'm wanting to reach right now to work one-on-one -on -one with me, they might not fully be on Facebook. But let me make it abundantly clear. I don't write off any platform as like, oh, my audience is not there. Because I know right. so many coaches and so many business owners and so many entrepreneurs like, oh, my audience isn't on Instagram. My audience yeah. isn't on TikTok. Like that's a kid's app. I'm like, let me make, let me, let me tell you this. My father is 60 something years old right now, or like 50 something years old. Yeah. Like he's on TikTok. Yeah. Like he watches TikTok. He sends me TikTok all the time. Like yeah. he's on there. And like, we always look at like, oh, well, you know, that's, that's a kid's app. Like, no, no, it's not like all these platforms are evolving and adopting and people are getting on mm -hmm. them more. And so mm -hmm. with that being said though, if you are, let's say you coach a power lifter or you coach a sure. NBA person, maybe they're on different platforms. Like I look at that as like maybe a power lifter is watching more YouTube videos because they want to learn how to get better. Or maybe they're watching their favorite power lifter on Instagram, right? Yeah. Versus an NBA dude might be on Twitter because they want to keep up with like what's happening in the league, what's happening on all that stuff, right? And on Instagram, yeah. right? So yeah. it's just understanding where are they and can we heavy up there as much as possible? And then right. with that also, you have to, and I'm going to, I'm going to drill this in people's heads because it's important, but like, who are you speaking to? And yeah. what I mean by who are you speaking to when they wake up in the morning until they go to bed, what are they doing? What are they saying? What actions, what inactions are they taking or not taking to yeah. a T? Because whenever you make content, whenever mm. you're speaking on video, whenever you're making a post and you get a DM from someone that says, I feel like you're in my head. It's because you understand them to a T so well and you know their problems so well because you've dealt with it so many times that when they come to you, they're like, oh my gosh, how, it's, it's almost like you're, you live in my house. How do you know I do all this? Or how do you know I don't yeah. do all this? How do you know yeah. I struggle with this? Well, it's because I've dealt with a lot of people that are like you, so I know what your problems are. You know, yeah. so Or because you experience them to yourself as well. That as well. And that's a big thing is you probably are your best client. Yeah, because right? the reason you want to help people do what you do today is because you didn't have you now when you needed <clears throat> yourself 10 years ago. So you're almost speaking to younger you, to all these people that are just starting like you did. Just okay. like how I make, how whenever I make content now, I'm speaking to a younger version of me, yep. essentially, and like getting people out of their own way or giving people like all of that I know now that I wish I knew then. Right. Yep. So that's how I look at it. For, first and foremost, above all else, when it comes to a strategy within things is sure. we have to know who we're speaking to. We have yeah. to. And then. And so, that, yep. Yeah. yeah. That, okay. So can that be, can that be broad or do you want that to be detailed in? So like Great question. people can say, can say, who am I speaking to? Entrepreneurs. Well, there's a ton of entrepreneurs out there, right? Kind of similar to what you're saying. Are you speaking to athletes or are you speaking to football athletes are you speaking to strength coaches or or are you speaking to basketball strength coaches football strength coaches are you speaking to how 
detailed would you recommend for them to get down and say, this is my target audience? The number one question that I get asked with that is, should I have a niche or should I not have a niche? Yes. Then the question is, well, what are you trying to do? Are we trying to right. offer something? Are we trying to sell something? Are we trying to mm. offer our services? And if we are, then yes, I recommend going extremely detailed and extremely niche specific. Correct. Why? Because for example, if yep. you can create results within X market, X demographic, whatever that is, fill in the blank for yourself and prove yourself there, you can take that, replicate it and put it to any other vertical, yep. wherever you want. Right. Correct. So for example, I spent five plus years in the fitness space, but I knew exactly what, what the problems were, what fitness coaches struggle with. I'm like, I could take this anywhere now. And yeah. that's where I've gone more broad with my content, but I spent right. five years in one industry, yep. one industry going hard at like about fitness coaches and content, just talking to them. And now I've gone more broad with my content, but, and mind you, am I still selling something? Yes. But now it's a problem that I can solve for bigger people, right? Like bigger problems now. So my, my number one thing is if you, sh if you're looking to offer services or be specific with someone, um, and solve a specific problem for someone, yes, you need to go more niche. Sure. However, if you're someone like Gary Vaynerchuk and you're like, well, look at what Gary Vee's doing. Well, that's a poor example because Gary Vee, he's not really selling you anything. So he can talk right. about a lot of different things, but let me make it clear when he does sell something, like he's going to go hard at it. If it's a shoe or right. a book or someone right. like Alex Hermosi, who is hundred million dollar leads, like that's something now, yes. but yes. mind you, he started extremely broad, but it's because he wasn't selling anything. So the differentiator Correct. to round out the question is if you're offering something or not. Mm. That's a huge, that's a huge differentiator. And my, for, for the, for the audience that we have here, my thing as coaches is look, I think you should offer something. I think you should, and maybe you don't start there, right? Maybe you say, I just want to start putting stuff out, but, and that's okay. I think you should then transition some way, shape or form to offer something. Because once you start putting stuff out, you get traction, you get attention, you get people reaching out to you. You would be foolish to not turn that time into monetary value for yourself, right? Um, and, and that's just me because if you have people, you, you have the need right? Then you're going to, you might as well supply it, get reviews, get testimonials, get social proof. And that you've started that wheelhouse. That's very broad, but it's a, a um, it's a thought process to have, right? Yeah, fully agree. So, okay. So should, quick question here, but should people focus on all social media channels or just mm. like you said, with their niche, should they go one channel, dominate, go vertical there, then go wide or should they say, I'm going to post everything on everything? And what does that look like? Thoughts on that? If, it, if it's just you doing your own social content, I don't recommend having seven different platforms. I recommend doing one and not just one. But what I mean by that is, for example, if you're on Instagram Reels, if you're going hard on Reels, cool, you can repurpose that to TikTok. I don't right. recommend repurposing that to YouTube Shorts even though you can, because if you are repurposing content to YouTube shorts and you do want to expand to long form YouTube content, you've now trained your audience to expect short content. And if you make long form, it's going to be hard to convert that audience over. So okay. my recommendation okay. is start out on just one platform and be extremely hyper consistent with that and ruthlessly. And what I mean by that is daily or multiple times a day and mm -hmm over and over again, over delivering for people and mm -hmm. engaging in the comments, sparking conversations, ha asking like conversations, questions. like asking questions, right? Correct. And do that for a considerable amount of time to where that platform has generated you enough revenue to be able to outsource to other channels. Maybe now you can offload filming your reels and have those edited for you, right? Yeah. Instead of you doing it all yourself, now you can spend that time maybe engaging on Twitter more and sure. being more active there and maybe starting to film some YouTube content. Cool. Now sure. all these channels are starting to work together. Great. Now what I can do is hire a videographer if I want to or an editor to sure. help me with my YouTube content. Now that's outsourced for me. But it's because one platform brought in enough revenue for me because I've had enough conversations. I've solved enough problems. I've put out enough content and not just enough, but like I'm continuing to put it out. And that's 
essentially brought in the revenue to put back into the business to where now I can use that to help funnel and fund other channels. And sure. when, and it's essentially just the evolution and scale of everything to where it's like, okay, right. now right. I can take that and expand everything. Right now, I, I think a lot of people would, would challenge me and be like, well, you know, what if I want to do a podcast and what if I want amazing, I, I, I'm in no way saying don't do it. What <clears> I am <throat> saying is if you get to any single point and you're like, I can't do this anymore, something messed up because I would mm -hmm. rather us add a channel and add things to our life and add things to the business, then subtract it. Like if we're doing a podcast a, a week right now and we're posting reels every single day and we're doing a YouTube video and in three weeks you're like, fuck this. I don't want yeah. to do YouTube videos because it takes me 19 hours to edit it. I'm like, okay, well, we shouldn't have done it in the first place because now we have to subtract it. Mm -hmm. And now the way I look at that is you're on probation for the next year or two to be able to even go on YouTube. Why? Because you need to prove to me that you can be fucking consistent with podcasting and Instagram reels right now and showing up there first before you even have the right to add something. And mm -hmm. I make that really, really clear to people because burnout happens so much because people get to a point where they're doing it for the passion, they're doing it for fun, and then it becomes a chore and it becomes a headache. And the only reason that content and everything in video for me is never a chore or a headache is because I fucking love this. Yeah. And if you're a coach and you love putting out content, you love helping people, do it because of that. Don't yeah. do it because of, oh, I can make money on YouTube and I can get the AdSense revenue. Yeah, you can, but it might take you five <laughs> to seven years to see real big dollar amount that you want. Yeah, right. I was just going to say, for those that don't know, I mean, like, yeah, you can get the AdSense, but if you're not a large channel anyways, it, it, it's, it's pennies on a dollar, right? Like, it, it, it's not that much where it's like, hey, this is life-changing money. I can now do all this other stuff, right? And to get to that point, like you're saying, is a five- to seven-year journey. So what you're saying is if you can't commit to that five- to seven-year journey and you're thinking the AdSense today, well, guess what? Uh, it, it's not worth it, right? Because you're not going to be there for five to seven years. You're going to be off of it. And so – if you're doing, if you're coaching, you're, you're listening to this and you're like, I'm not even on anything, start with one, right? Start with one, whether that's Instagram, whether that's Twitter. I know a ton of people on Twitter that have just absolutely blown up from Twitter. I know a ton of people on, on Instagram that have just blown up just from Instagram. And then they can convert or TikTok. And then they can, can convert, excuse me, from one audience or one platform to the other. However, your audience is slightly different on each platform. But what you're saying is you got to play the long game. If you're not willing to commit to it, then you might as well not do it right now. Right. Yeah. Right? And, and, and that's with anything. Like yeah. think about anyone. And I know coaches are listening to this. Think about your clients. Yeah. What are they going to lose 30 pounds and then, all right, I'm, I'm done with this. No, because yeah. guess what? You're going to gain it right back. Right. Same thing right. with social. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to sprint to a hundred thousand on Instagram and then I'm going to cash out. Well, then what happens when the money runs out? Yeah. And you got to come back to it. It's like, no, like put out the content because you want to do it for the long run and stop tying yourself to a dollar amount. Same thing with clients, like stop tying yourself to a weight goal on the scale or when I fit in these jeans, I'll be happy. No, you won't. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. when you, when you get to a certain follower account on social, you no, you won't like it. It's just, it's not the case, you know? It's and it's just like, it's not, you have to do it because you actually love it. And because you actually want to help people every single day and give so much more to them. Than they will ever give to you, than they will ever give to you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's dive deep on a couple of applicable things that they can do if they're making. Let's use Instagram Reels and um, whatever platform else you want. Doesn't matter. Let's use Reels for instance, or Instagram as a whole. Um, what do you recommend as content that people? What is an easy way for people to make something that's eye catching? And I know you have a, a, a rule that it's three hooks for every one headline or for every one video, right? Kind of talk a little bit about that. But what do you recommend? Like if you're going on Instagram, which I think where most people are, here's a couple of things that could really help you um, with your video formatting um, or, or quick editing tips or whatever the case may be. Yeah, great question. One thing when it comes to social channels now, they have a built-in editor essentially. And yes, that's the beauty of it is you don't need to go externally 
And what I mean by that is you don't need to film on your phone and then edit in a separate application and go through all these loopholes. You can film right within the application itself, right within Instagram, right within TikTok and edit it there. If that's all you have, start with that. If that is the best thing you have at your disposal right now, then that's the best thing you have. Great. Again, back to my point of once you actually start to make revenue from it and can be able to monetize enough, maybe then we upgrade to other stuff, right? But use what you have right now. And when it comes to eye catching, scroll stopping, whatever buzzword you want to use within content, I look at it simply of what are you doing to pique someone's interest? What are Mm. you doing to evoke an emotion in someone? What are you doing to challenge someone? And so many people are scared to even not only just state their opinion on things, but just state how they would speak in content. For example, when I say your content sucks, I'm calling you out right away. And, 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 and I do that because I see it. And I do that because I know if that's triggering to you, then it probably means you know your content sucks. And it probably means you know you're putting in the least amount of effort, but want to see the most amount of result. And you know that's you. But yep. also I say, here's how to fix it. I'm not going to just be the asshole that's like, your content sucks, uh, yada, yada, make better hooks. Like, I want to help you fix it. I say in the video, I'm like, your content sucks. It's costing you views and keeping you broke. Yep. Let's fix that. Yep. Right? Because I want to put a positive spin on it and actually give you tangibles with that. So when it comes to content, you have to pique someone's interest. It has to be interesting. It has to be. And what you think is interesting and what you think, oh, I think this is a good piece of content. Great. But- I would challenge you to ask yourself, okay, is this interesting to me or is this interesting to the consumer? Mm. And, and what I mean, and, and it, it's, it's, I say that because what's actually interesting to me, I actually is interesting to the consumer at the same time. Cause I'm generally right. interested in everything that I do. Um, right. so when it comes to, for example, making a video on, let's say, uh, this is a great example. Let's say you're talking to athletes who squat and maybe they squat in like Converse shoes, but now like the, those Vivo barefoot shoes are better for squatting in. Like, is that something that's actually interesting to them and can help them more? Or is that something Mm -hmm. selfish for you that you're like, Oh, well, you know, I, I like this. So this is why you should buy it. And then you want to like have a back end affiliate link for people like, you know what I mean? So I look at that as, okay, what is the audience getting out of this? Stop looking at it of how, what, how can I benefit out of this content? It's, mm. well, what is the audience getting out of this, right? Yeah. And when I, what I mean by what is the audience getting out of it, you have to understand, well, what problem am I solving for them? And when I make this piece of content, what am I saying to pique their interest right away within the first three seconds? Am I piquing their interest within something I said that's like, ooh, it, it forced me to think differently. It's challenging mm. a preconceived notion that I had on something, right? Maybe I thought on it. This could be a very well case. Maybe I thought eating before workout was bad. And now right. you're challenging them on like athletes. Like here's why, um, here's why not eating is destroying your chances of making it in the NBA or something, sure. right? Like that'd be like, holy shit. I'd, I'd pay attention to that. Cause I'd be like, well, right. well, what am I doing wrong? Right. Why? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to get there. Why am I not, you know, whatever the case may be. And how right. important is the word you in that first three seconds? It's a great question. It depends. It always depends because it depends on if you want to directly call someone out right away. And if you directly want to just immediately like speak to a problem and command attention, there's differences within hooks and how they work. There's hooks that like like you can directly call someone out, look them in the eye and be like, your content sucks. And you you know, like go ham on it. Or it can just be like, this is X amount of ways to do X, Y, Z, or this. And, and, and it just, it's, it starts like that. Or it's simply just kind of like how we're having right now, a podcast clip that right. is as if right. we're in the middle of a conversation and that gets clipped or something, right? So yep. there's multiple different ways that hooks can work. I think it matters. Well, what are you trying to solve within the video? And okay, sure. if I know what I'm trying to solve for that, it's, I look at everything as an equation, literally. Like X plus X equals Y of like, okay, well, I'm solving for X in the middle here. Great. That's going to equal this tangible outcome that I want people to take from this. Well, how do I get them to even be interested here so they can know about this problem that they have that I want to bring awareness to? Well, that's on you. Are you trying to evoke an emotion in them? Right? So when I look at that as, okay, well, maybe there's a a player who has excruciating knee pain because they do this one movement wrong. Well, what is that one movement that they're doing wrong? And they're having knee pain. Or maybe 
maybe you're helping them rehab from like an ACL injury and you want them to get back to full speed. Well, what, what could they be doing better with that? Or what are they doing? How, how could they, how could they mitigate their chances of not having that happen again? Yes. Right? And so, that, and so that's like your goal within content is understanding again, at the end of the day, who we're talking to and like what, what certain words we can use specifically, because guess what? If we're talking to female athletes or male athletes, different words we have to use, different context, different Correct. problems, different right? emphasis too, you know, right. And different emphasis. Yeah, mm-hmm. different emphasis on stuff as well. And what you're essentially saying and, and to, to paraphrase is you have to backwards plan and strategically think about what you're going to put out and how you're going to um, put it together in order to then, you know, make it, hit or make it stick or make it land right you have to strategically think about for me if coaches will understand this it's no different than reverse engineering your sport or backward planning your training program program we want to get to x volume x result blah 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 in eight weeks well what are the steps we have to do to get there it's no different from your content you want to get x results or you want to get x engagement well what are you doing how are you putting that together and what is your plan eight week plan, four week plan, what's your daily plan? What's your word uh, verbiage from that standpoint to see how you're going to get to that end result. You might not get there and that's okay. You can reevaluate just like we do, but it's no different. Yeah. And I will say that too. There is a beauty in planning and having an organization with that. However, right. what I will challenge on is let's say for example, you're in the gym with an athlete and you correct them right there on a movement cool. Have someone film you really quick on a video because that's going to be your best content because you literally just did it. And not only that, you know exactly how to describe it without having to plan it at all. So for example, if an athlete, like if, if an athlete's like knees are not going over their toes, for example, and you made a little shift in them, you're like, okay, oh gosh, like I, I I know exactly what I want to say with this. Like have someone film you right away. And like, we're here with yada yada. Like I want to show you this one slight movement that's going to help increase your squat by five by 500 percent whatever that is sure like yeah. mi- that, that'd be a hell of an increase um but like, <laughs> i'm like god that'd be insane but even like 100 percent, right sure. and and essentially just talking them through mm-hmm. what you just did but like that's going to yeah. be your best content because that's in real life that happened that's another flavor of content that i like to call of irl style of that's more in the moment and stuff like that will be your best content why because the content that takes you five minutes to film is the content that innately is in you that just needs to come out. And there's no pre-planning, there's no scripting, there's no second guessing, you just go and do it. That's the stuff that performs best. And there's people that are always like, well, why does it take me five hours to film a video and that tanks? It's because you're not aligned with it. You're not. Mm. The content that takes you five minutes to complete and execute and dominate on it's because you're so aligned with it that the audience yeah. can feel it. A and B, your say. your energy is so in, in authentic. Tune with it. It's, it's authentic. just so authentic. Correct. You yeah. don't have to be like, oh, let me um, change this angle real fast. You don't care about any of that. You're just, hey, go. You know, like just go. And that leads me to my next point because uh, I know you talk about this all the time. How important is it to speak to your audience and show your face? Um, rather than just always hiding behind it. Extremely important. And to your point where you said pick a platform, I would rather you choose a platform that is video dominant because the reason for that is I trust someone significantly more if I can see them. And oh, by the way, if I can hear them too, great. I guarantee you, if you're just listening to this podcast, you're probably like, okay, this Rico guy. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But if you watch a video version of it, you could see different inflections. You could see the way I speak mm-hmm. about it. You could see like my eyes open and, right. and just the way I, I interact on camera. And that is different. And doing so on video leaves no room to hide. None. And a lot of people want to hide behind the written word. They want to hide behind a graphic because it's safe because it's comfortable, because getting on video is hard. Well, you want to know what's also hard? Not having a thriving business. You want to know what's also hard? Not having anyone reach out to you for help. And you want to know what's also really hard? Is being broke as fuck. And so if you don't want any of that, if you want to actually have a thriving business, you want to have, you want to be able to make money from it. You want to be able to have people reach out to you. You want to be known. You got to put yourself out there and you have to put yourself out there in front of the camera speak to it and treat it as if it's the one person that needs your help the most. 
Yeah. That's absolutely outstanding. I think it's, it's the most important thing, if you ask me. If you ask me, it's the most important. Now, how, okay, so with that, let's stay on Instagram for a couple more minutes here, but how important are stories? Instagram stories are extremely important because Instagram stories, I look at that as a 24 hour vlog of your life. I mm -hmm. look at Instagram stories as a way to let people into the behind the scenes of you. That's where you can, I'm trying to find the word. That's where you can execute on your personal brand. Like that's where it's personal to you, right? Those are the little quirks about you that people latch onto, right? Those yeah. are the little things that where when I talk about being a fucking shark, it's on there. When I talk about espresso and cannolis and all these different things that I love, like that's what's true to me there. You might not mm -hmm. see that in my content, but like if you know me, that's mm -hmm. what's on story and stuff, right? And so yep. that I look at as giving people access to you behind the curtain than what they see on your feed. And whether that's you going to the gym, that's you drinking, like I said, coffee or setting up your day or doing whatever that is, going on a walk yep. where you live, it allows for more connection. Yeah. That's what I want to get at. Stories are for connection, yeah. right? I look at feed as more of education, more of entertainment, more of just, if we want to look, if we want to call it value. And I say that in sure. quotes because I think that's yeah. overused a little bit, but I 100%. look at that as hel helping people publicly. And then your stories are for, okay, how can you get more connected to me now? Right? So mm. that's more of like your nurturing audience there. Um, but yeah, I, th I think Instagram stories are by far one of the most valuable assets. You think more people should, and I don't want to use the word focus on stories, but um, be more intentional about them. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say like you have to hyper focus on like what am I posting on my story today, and and you yeah, know yeah, overthink yeah, 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 yeah. it. Yeah, I, I, I do think you should start to intertwine different aspects about your life that maybe you're scared to share. That could be the unlock to getting someone to be like, okay, this was the one thing I needed to hear today. I didn't know this about you. Thank you. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. And, and not just that, but let's say, for example, I mean, someone like me, if I made a, if I made an Instagram post of talking about like, um, you know, I've, I see a lot of creator and this is me paraphrasing. Like I've seen a lot yeah. of creators like, you know, want to give up on content and burn out and just quit. And I talk about all the times that I've laid in bed because I'm like, I'm questioning myself being like, what am I doing with this? Like none of this, mm. none of this content stuff's working. Like no one's going to yeah. take me seriously. No one's going to think that I'm an expert. And I, I feel like I'm just spinning my wheels. Like people relate to that. Right. And that could be a, a feed post. That could be a story post, but like, it could be whatever. It could Around be in the moment too. It could yeah. be in the moment. Like, Hey guys, you see me do X, Y, and Z. This is how I'm really feeling right now. Right. Because it's relatable. It's, it's relatable. Right. Yeah. And, and the other day, I, li I literally just did a story post because I'm like, listen, I, I see a lot of just entitlement on social about all oh, the yeah. Instagram algorithm and the reach and all this and everything. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, do you realize how valuable of a time we live in where we can make a, a piece of content about our thoughts and help someone help someone make more money and, and better their lives at literally the touch of a button? And I don't think you realize that. And people don't take advantage of that more. And it's selfish of you if you really want to build big things to not be on there. And I don't, yeah. I don't think people comprehend that because we've never seen that before. And, and, and to be honest with you, it's still all pretty new to people because there's people that, there's people that have no comprehension of, wait, hang on, your video got a million views. Well, what does that mean quantifiably? Well, do you realize a million views is, is like as if a, it's a small country? Like, Literally. Like pe people don't quantify that or it's like, oh, your video got 120,000 views. What does that mean? I want you to think of Cowboys Stadium packed. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine yeah. speaking in front of 120,000 people? That's what that's like. Yep. And for some, and, and because we, we've never seen that, right? And, and I like to look at it like this. Think about anyone in the past, if they would have had social media today. Oh. Think about any, like anyone. If you, if, you, if you talk about building an audience, Think about everyone in the past that's been able to build an audience without social media. Think about if, and, 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 and I say this, like one of the people that comes to my mind, I'm like, think about if, if Martin Luther King had social media, he'd be yeah. a, an icon. Like all these people that we look at of they like well-known figures in history, if they had a social media or if they had an opportunity to share their message more to masses and they were already reaching mass amounts of people without digital, 
Just Without think about that. And oh, by yeah. the way, I have people complaining that my video only got 30 views. Well, let me ask you something. If you stood in front of 30 people, you think you could deliver that to them? Or would you freeze and be like, holy shit, there's a lot of people in here? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And people yeah. complain about, oh, my video only got 3,000 views. Or it only got 30,000 views when I normally get 500,000. Fuck you. Who cares? Because No, you, you, no you know why? Because I, I want to make this clear because people need to drop the entitlement because it's like whether it's one person or a million, whatever that is, you're still helping someone. Like yeah. stop focusing on the numbers. That's why I say stop tying it to I need to get to 100,000 followers or I want to make X amount of money with it. Like stop with it. Yes, yeah. that can be a byproduct of it. The people that last the longest in this game of social media, I promise you, I will, I, I, I will bet my first child on this, is because they are so attached to the process of just making the next piece of content a little bit more helpful for someone or because they want to put out one more video than they're already doing right now because they want to genuinely help someone. Like, Stop focusing on the numbers of all of it and focus on how is my message within this content? How am I delivering this? Am I actually... Mm -hmm my energetic self with this? Like, am I, am I fully aligned with this? And like, did I do the best fucking job that I could? If yes, amazing. Everything else will take care of itself. Stop worrying about the algorithm and focus yep. on the audience. They need mm -hmm. you. The algorithm's smarter than you. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. I look at it like to add one thing to it as a business is once you get your foundation, right, was what you're saying now, the process. Now, how can I make that better? Is it that I need to add something here? Is it that I need to make it a little bit more convenient here? Whatever the case may be, I'm, I'm talking with a, uh, a company right now about, hey, can we make this automation so it does X or whatever the case may be? It's just now adding what we call in the sports world, like wrinkles to everything or additions to everything. How this is the base, great, but now let's add this. Let's add that because that's the feedback we received or, or if I watch it, that's what I would like to see or anything from that standpoint. Cause now you're about the process. You're about the audience and making everything better rather than it only got 5,000 views. It only got 4,000 plays. It only got 10 saves, whatever. It doesn't matter. How can you make that? Is it that in this two seconds, I need to add something here or whatever the case may be. It's just thinking about it, strategically thinking about it. You know, does that, you know what I'm saying? hundred percent. And that's what I call KPI of each post of the key performance indicator. For example, like if we're only looking at views, of course, you're going to be disappointed. But if you look at, wow, this video got 20 more saves than the last one. Wow. That's something that's great. Or wow, this video got 15 more comments than the last one. Amazing. Like stop looking at the likes, stop looking at the views and start looking at the other metrics of, okay, like my video that I'm going to post today, the goal is for people to save it. And right. my, my goal is, okay, if I get X amount of saves, like, and, and mind you, I'm not looking at it of like, oh, if I'm getting, you know, more saves, but sure, like, sure, if, sure. But, but I know it's a good piece of content. If it's getting more saves than likes, why? Because it's reaching more people and they're saving it first because it was so helpful. And I look at that as a win for me because most yep. people, what it's the likes and the views and everything. I'm like, nope, the goal of this post was to get more saves. And that's what I wanted amazing. Like I, but, but I, I know that deliberately because that's the goal with it, but yeah. you have to understand what's the goal with these pe with each piece of content. Maybe it's to generate more, co more conversations in the comments. Maybe it's to have right. people DM you about something and maybe they, they felt like, well, you, you challenged me on this. Like, is this really true? Like, is this, oh, is, is this true that like, you know, having this post-workout is actually better for muscle recovery or whatever. Right. Sure. And that sparks a conversation. Like, right. What's right. the KPI of it? You have to understand that each post is completely different. It's not just about the likes and the views. Right, right. And then if it does flop or if it does hit, ask yourself what you did differently. Yes. And what if it hits, what did you do differently? And what can I continue to do? If it flops, what didn't I do? And what may I need to change? And start to look at it from that perspective. Then you can add that and think about it for your next one the next video, the next, whatever the case may be. If this didn't go as planned, what went wrong? If this did go as planned, what went right? What can I sustain, continue to do? And then again, you just build from there. It's layers. That's how businesses learn and grow. They figure out what went well and it stays in their system and their process. And then they just build on top of that. Hey, from it's here now. Yeah, it's just data. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So Rico, um, 
this has been fantastic, man. This is yeah, bro. This has been, been really good. I'll leave you with an open floor for one last piece of advice for anybody that's creating stuff or, or, or recommendations from that simpler. You heard me talk about lightly being a fucking shark, and it says it up there on my uh, little board thing. And the reason I'm so heavy on that motto is because sharks – physically can't swim backwards or they will die. They always have to be in a forward motion. So meaning if they do need to go backwards, they have to turn around, but they're still facing forward. Same thing with life and everything. And the reason I'm saying this is because be a fucking shark, whether it's social business, life, your clients, your work, your relationship, whatever that is, like continue to move forward in life. And even if you do have to go backwards, you're still in a forward motion. Right. Yeah. And so the reason I love be a fucking shark is because sharks at the end of the day, also, they don't have a plan B it's plan a, like if they're hungry for something, it, it's plan a, right. It's, kill. And same, it's a kill, kill, kill mindset. Right. And it's the same thing within life and everything is there's no plan B. Like if you want to really go for this, you really want to go for social and like build a brand, build a business that like can thrive and everything we talked about, there's no plan B there's no, mm-hmm. Oh, well I'll fall back on. No, no. Like that, that's not even a thought. Like you go yeah. all on this. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Thank you for your time, man. I, yeah, I, I greatly appreciate who you are, what you're doing um, and what you put out, your thought process, your mindset, your view, your outlook, uh, not only life, business, um, but just kind of everything, man. And, and, and so Maybe you hear it a lot, maybe you don't, but I appreciate you and what you're doing. Um, and and I just want, yeah, I just want to tell you, thank you, man, um, and for everything that you're doing. I know it's not only inspiring for myself, but it's it's actionable too, and that is the a huge differentiator for people that are just inspiring. Well, take action. That's a huge component of it. So, but I just want to let you know that, um, and, and I appreciate you and what you're doing, man. So, thank Thanks, you for bro. your time, man. Yeah, thank you. Guys, hey, look, if you got anything from this, do us a huge favor. Share the show, okay? Um, If you didn't get anything from this, that's probably because you weren't listening or paying attention, which is your own fault. So um, do us a huge favor. Share the show. Leave a review. Okay, go follow Rico on social media if you haven't already. Um, Go back and listen to the very beginning of it because we dropped it right away. But, guys, do us a huge favor. Share the show. Let somebody know, hey, this is very beneficial. Subscribe on YouTube and leave a review on Spotify. We would appreciate that very much. Until then, we'll catch you on the next one. 